Welcome to Movie World Plus, the place where we talk movies. I'm Andy Signor, and today I'm here to review Fast X, the 10th installment in the Fast and the Furious franchise. And dare I say, maybe one of the best? That's right, guys. I really had fun with this film. Now, I've had trouble with the last few. I got no problem with my action being silly. And this franchise has gotten silly. I think the, the uh, franchise hit its high point with Fast Five, if we're being honest. And the film centers around events from Fast Five. It really does feel like a spiritual sequel, if you will, to Fast Five with nods to the insane craziness that has happened in six, seven, eight, and nine. And uh, I gotta say, Jason Momoa is a fantastically maniacal sociopath villain that ends up creating something more exciting that I feel like this franchise has lacked. No offense to Charlize Theron, who's also in this. Uh, there's just something even more menacing and wild about Jason Momoa's performance. And man, does he go for it. He knows what kind of movie he's in. He's loving it. He's evil, but then funny and trying to make it all. Jason Momoa lift this up to another level, as well as the action. I got to say, the action in this film was pretty great. Now, Here's the problem. Yes, it's part one. The film does not conclude at the end. The film is left open with, uh, you know, what's supposed to be part two. But now I'm hearing might be a trilogy. And honestly, I'm not mad at it. I could see why the studio saw this and was like, whoa, all right, can we do two more at least if we're really wrapping this whole up? Are they really wrapping this up? Never. They will never <laughs> retire this family. The whole film is sort of about generations and families forever. And uh, there's no way the Fast and the Furious franchise, Fast and the Furious franchise will ever end, but could Vin and others decide not to make films? <laughs> I don't think anytime soon. Uh, but the film centers around uh, Vin's kid, uh, and, uh, his family, obviously the whole family, but his kid's now a little older and, uh, yeah, everything's sort of good in Vin's life. He's starting to finally, you know, enjoy his family life until... Jason Momoa's character steps into the story. And if you've seen the trailers, I'm not spoiling anything. Events in Fast Five trigger this uh, thought, and this, uh, these actions by Jason Momoa's character to get revenge. But the line he says is, I don't want to just kill him. I want him to suffer. And that's what this film is about, trying to destroy the family. Will they destroy the family? And uh, look, I had fun. I got to say, look, it's a lot of people in this movie. It's a lot of people to try and juggle through. And does every person get their own arc and moment? No, no. There's definitely some supporting people who are just doing their thing uh, as best they can. It's a lot. It's a big ensemble at this point. More and more grow. Uh, but Jason Momoa was by far the standout of this film. And I got to say, I really enjoyed it. And I'm excited uh, to see where this, the events that he's created will continue is how I can say it because I, I, why it does have an ending if you will, but it's an open-ended ending where it's like, uh Oh, what's going to happen. And I was ready for it. Now there's two post credit scenes. Do not spoil them. And there's one like sort of early on, I guess, surprise. And then there's a, another one and it's been ruined online and just, I'm in shock of how many people ruined it. Thank God it wasn't ruined for me. It wasn't ruined for me, and I, it's hard to talk about without then explaining it, but there's a um, surprise that I was just, I was like, man, this better happen. I want this to happen. And uh, they surprised me, and I was, uh, the, the theater lost it. Now, I got a whole other thought on that, but that'll be part of, I guess I'll do a, I'll try and do a spoiler breakdown of what I think about this whole thing, but all I will say is avoid avoid the, uh, the internets. You'll see it when it happens, and you'll go, oh, well, will you have an issue with it or not? Um, we'll talk about that later, but just warning, there's two, there's not one at the end end. You don't have to sit through all the credits. I mean, you can out of respect, but it's just, uh, there's two surprises at the end, um, at the end of the film. And then one like post mid credit, I guess they call it. And, uh, yeah, anyway, long story short, I'm excited about where this can go. And I, I, for some reason, as silly as this one is, and guys, it's silly, please don't <laughs> take up saying this is high art. It's silly. As you've seen in the trailers, there's a scene on the Hoover Dam and other places. You're just like, but I loved it. I still loved it. And that's what I want in this franchise, to embrace the silly, but still have some fun with it. Have a couple moments of serious fine, but raise the stakes up. Have a maniacal villain. And that's what you get with Fast X. Un unlike 7, 8, 7 had emotional feelings because we lost Paul Walker. 8, 9, I don't, and then 6, I would argue, just 
felt excessive and there wasn't much to it, the stakes, whatever. Seven had real life stakes. Obviously, we lost Paul and that made that film much more emotional and I think better for a lot of people because it was just sad. Um, but as the films go, I got to say Fast Five still my favorite and this is the perfect sequel to Fast Five that leaves it open-ended to potentially have some more fun. And I got to say, I didn't feel like they left a lot on the table. Sure, there's like, it's unresolved, but I do feel like the sequences, the stunt pieces that they set up in Fast X were exciting enough. The film felt long enough. Like I felt like I got a good chapter of the Fast franchise and Fast X was sort of the beginning of the end as they hyped it. I, I do, usually I'm really not a fan of these, but this movie is sort of just this, a big stunt cinema spectacular. Eat your popcorn, laugh, sit back. What, what's going on? Oh my God, what did they just do? And this movie kept me entertained, I gotta say throughout. It, again, check your brain at the door for the physics and all that stuff. But even that, I would say I still, I still like, found, I was able to like suspend my dis disbelief in this one more than some of the other ones. Um, no, that's not true. There's, there's a couple moments, but, but I, I, I was so it, it was like built up better. I was rooting for it more this time around than I think I was in the other ones because the Jason Momoa and the threats and what's happening. I was rooting for the family this time more than I've ever been rooting for it. And so for that, I got to say props. I also got to give massive props to John Cena. There's a bunch of people in this film. Momoa is the standout. I'll get to Brie Larson in a second, but, uh, John Cena's back. And man, I really am becoming a John Cena fan. Massive fan. I mean, I, he's really funny in this. He gets to really, he gets to have a little bit more. His character grows up, like changes in this one a bit. And I got to say, what a wonderful addition. And John Cena as an actor between this and Peacemaker, I have, I am fully on board to the John Cena train. And like, yes, dude, well-earned. You fought against everybody trying to say you couldn't do this. You're just a wrestler. No, he's got some chops, guys. He's funny. The action. I really like him. The Peacemaker in this were some of my favorite things he's done. And I got to say, I he was a standout amongst the cast where I was like, damn, John Cena's bringing it. I love it. Yes. Uh, so props to him. Now, Brie Larson's also in it. This is the first time I like really was able to like see her in a big franchise that's not Captain Marvel written by somebody else. How does she pull it off? And I got to say, I didn't dislike her at all. She, she There's some similar, you know, uh, things that she does as an actress, but I felt like it worked better in this. She's a little bit more fun. Um, yes, she's just like, kind of like, you know, knows better, but it wasn't annoying the way it's written in Captain Marvel. She definitely it felt like she was attempting to. I don't know. It just, it felt different for acting, acting. And yeah, I didn't mind her in this. I won't spoil all the sort of the roles of everybody else, but she was a fine addition. I mean, it was a little excessive. There's so many people in this movie, but good for her, man. I, I she did not bother me at all. And in, in the Captain Marvel, she's bothered me a lot in this one. I felt like she, you know, she came to the table to play and yeah, everybody else in the cast is doing their thing. I mean, Michelle Rodriguez, once again, she gets to have a big fight with Charlize Theron. That's a fun, that's a good moment. I will give her that. But everybody else, like the Taj and you know, Ludacris and Ludacris and um, uh, uh, why am I forgetting blanking on his name? Um, uh, oh God, why am I Tyrese? Tyrese, um, Han, the, the, this whole crew here just sort of doesn't have much to do. <laughs> Jordana Brewster again. Uh, it's not really there. I mean, they're there. They have some sequence. There, there's there's a, a an arc for them, if you will. Didn't bother me. But sometimes the movie heavily relies on their comic relief. And this one felt like it was relying on sort of this universe building and this threat coming at everybody. And I got to say, I preferred that more than I typically do. So at the end of the day, Vin Diesel, man, kudos to you. I think you took the notes. You made, you made a stellar 10th installment. It's fun. It's going to make so much money. I really think this one's going to be one that maybe people see go see a couple times. It's just fun. Fun, senseless craziness, silliness with characters that we've come to know and a bigger threat than they've ever faced. And I got to say, good formula for success and sign me up for X2. I don't know what they're going to call it. 11, will it be X1? I don't know if the titles of these movies never make much sense these days, but he has warned us this is now no longer a two-parter. The studio is trying to make him stretch it out to a trilogy. Now that could mess this up and who knows? But if they follow the same path and keep this going, I could be engrossed for a 
for a longer six hour big budget car explosion adventure. Sure, sign me up, I'm ready, I'm back. I'm back into the family, baby. Adopt me. Let's do this, Dom. Are you guys excited for this one? Are you not? I want to hear your thoughts. Make sure if you haven't already, hit subscribe to this channel. It's our Movie World channel. It's my movie place where I talk movies, reviews, etc. Hit that like button. Leave your comments down below. What do you think? Have you seen it? Don't spoil it. Uh, I'll try and make another video to talk about that soon. I mean, would you guys like like a live weekly just hang out, talking movies, spoilers, and everything else? Let me know. I would love to try to fit that in with you guys. Appreciate you guys so much. Stay tuned for more here on Movie World Plus.